Hello, my name is Liz Shanks, mom of two and children's book enthusiast. I would like to welcome you to Liz's Book Snuggery, which features Liz's Picks videos where you will find some of the best reads in children's picture books, read aloud segments, and way back Wednesdays, where I dig up an essential classic from my library to share with all of you. So I invite you to please stop by lizsbooksnuggery.com. Our book today is Madeline and the Old House in Paris by John Bemelmans Marciano. It's all so comfortably familiar, like a fairy tale that we've heard again and again with the same once upon a time beginning. Except here it goes something like, in an old house in Paris, it was covered with vines, lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. The characters that have enchanted generations of readers with the stories of Madeline, the red uniformed heroine, Miss Clavel, her no-nonsense but knowing headmistress of a boarding school for young French mademoiselles, and of course the antagonistic and sometimes cruel and always nosy head of the school, Lord Cuckoo Face, who loves to stir the pot. Add to this French cassoulet of conundrums the appearance of a ghost, of one Felix Laborte, and Mr. Bemelman's Marciano, grandson of Ludwig Bemelman's, the originator of the character of Madeline, has us hooked. He has done an excellent job in his storyline of conveying the pluck and stand-up attitude that has defined Madeline for her readers and added a ghostly plot line. Ready for a Parisian romp perfect for Halloween? Well, it seems the greedy Lord Cuckoo Face discovers a telescope in the attic of the school that has been deemed haunted by Ms. Clavel. With the dismissive term rubbish left hanging in the air, Lord Cuckoo Face co-ops the telescope as there is not a ghost-like creature stirring that he can see so far. All Lord C can see are dollar signs as he makes off in his car with the telescope. Enter the returning character of Pito, the son of the Spanish ambassador who lives next door to the boarding school. Initially, he is a prankster who gleefully revels in scaring the girls at the school with ghostly disguises. But even Pepito is convinced of the reality of the existence of the ghost when they all come face to face in the attic with the ghosts bellowing. Woohoo! Now, kids, you've got to hand it to Madeline for being one cool French cookie as she calmly replies to his ghostly outburst with a poo poo. Atta girl, Madeline, never cower in front of ghosts or ghouls. Tears immediately begin to flow from the eyes of Monsieur Labmort, and it's crystal clear this is no ordinary ghost. In life, from the age of seven, he became fascinated with the stars, and the girls' schoolhouse was built as an observatory to witness a comet that arrives near the Earth once in 221 years. An unfortunate accident the night of the first viewing deprived Felix of this supreme galactic sight. Can such a moment ever come again? Yep. The next night is the return of the comet. Can the girls and Pepito rescue the telescope from Lord C so Felix can view the comet? What ensues is vaguely reminiscent of the tasks of the ghost from Dickens, A Christmas Carol, visiting old Scrooge to get him to mend his ways. Can one ghost get Lord Cuckoo Face to do the same? Only in this case, it's a matter of returning stolen property so a ghost can glimpse a comet. The beautiful sight of Madeline and Pepito rowing the telescope in a boat back to the school while the sky is filled with stars and the flashing of the comet is a moment where art and narrative perfectly match in a picture book. The words may say, Quote, the children seized their prize and then wrote up the same, but the art says it all. What better adieu to Madeline's latest adventure than the scene of a girl, a boy, and a ghost gazing at a glorious comet as it streaks through the night sky. Please don't give up this ghost before reading Madeline and the Old House in Paris. It's a hauntingly happy read. 
I'm Liz Shanks, and thank you for joining us on this video from Liz's Book Snuggery. Our book today was Madeline and the Old House in Paris by John Bemelman's Marciano. And remember, you are what you read, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Listen, love.